Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, we are going to dive into the problem shortest path in a grid with obstacles elimination. It's a hard labeled problem on lead code and has been asked in Google in the last zero to six months. So very interesting problem because we can break this problem apart, this hard problem apart into very small little increments of a very easy problem. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and discuss what is the problem asking and the basics input output format. So you're given this grid, which has the size of M cross N, M number of uh, rows and N number of columns. And there are a bunch of obstacles in this grid. You're given the starting point as zero zero, which is where you'll always start. And you're given this point uh, M minus one comma N minus one, which is where you'll always end. And so given the start and end point, you want to find a path from the start to the end point, given that you have K dynamites with you. Now dynamites means that even though you have these orange obstacles over here, you can place a dynamite over there, break it apart, and you can open up a path for you. However, you only have this limited K amount of obstacles with you. So in this case, the best possible answer is described over here with the number of steps or the count or the path length is equal to six because of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So at the sixth step, you were able to reach this end. And this was given that you have one dynamite and you were able to blow this guy up. So you were able to blow up this obstacle and that's why you got the answer as six. This is a complicated problem because there are a lot of things that are going on. So what if we just simplified things a bit? Let's look at a very, very easy case and we'll slowly build up to what's happening. Let's take the case of we're given no obstacles at all and we have to detect whether we can reach the end or not. Okay, the goal is simple. You have to tell me whether you can reach the end or not. That's it. In this case, it's quite trivial. You can always reach the end since there are no obstacles. You can just take whatever path you want. We don't care, even care about what path you're taking. We just care about that. You can reach the end. So in this case, trivially true, you can always reach the end. No obstacles is very easy. So let's make things a bit complicated. Let's add a few obstacles over here. And the goal is still same. You have to detect whether you can reach the end or not. This thing, this case is a bit more tricky. So one possible solution is, uh, you know what, if the start and end are not surrounded, we are probably good. So in this case, uh, this green, green, uh, this end point is not surrounded by these red guys. And this yellow box is not surrounded by these red guys. So we're probably good. Right. But uh, there's an issue that can happen. Take a look at this case. In this case, while the yellow and the green are both sort of free in themselves, they're not surrounded by any red. They have this giant wall sitting in the middle, which can make our answer untrue. Like in this case, we cannot reach the end. And so we need some way of traversing this grid, some way of traversing this graph. Now we're not going to look at it as a graph, but we're just going to stick with grid. And we're going to look at an algorithm called D, uh, called BFS. This is called breadth first search. And what it says is you take a starting point, let's say it's this yellow point over here, and we'll imagine it as a light bulb. So as soon as you turn it on, it will sort of illuminate or illuminate the area around it. And so this yellow guy will illuminate all of the area here. But because of all of these walls, it will never be able to reach this green part at the end. Make sense? What we're trying to do is we're trying to radially search outwards saying that, Hey, uh, can we sort of explore this area more? If there are no walls, if there are no sort of grid boundaries, then we can definitely explore the grid more. And this BFS is exactly what we're going to implement right now. Let's look at a pseudocode, a quick pseudocode, and we'll go ahead and implement that because the final solution is just two steps away from this solution. I'm not kidding. It's going to be very, very simple. Once we write this down, it's going to be extremely simple. Okay. Since we are starting the BFS, since we are starting or lighting up this bulb from this zero, zero point, we'll have a queue and we'll put zero, zero over here. Fine. 
and uh, we want to search outwards like this so we want to go uh, okay let me just explain it this way so we'll say while the queue is not empty while there are elements in the queue while there are places or grid positions left to be explored let's go ahead and explore them shall we we have will like, extract out this x comma y coordinate which will tell me uh, we are currently looking at x comma y and for all of the neighbors of x comma y we're going to iterate over all of them and we're going to ask hey is that an obstacle or not if that is not an obstacle we can put this neighbor inside of this queue which means that this neighbor can be explored later on in a later iteration in the same way what i'm trying to do is i'm going to start at this point and at this point what all are its what all are its neighbors this guy over here and this guy over here one node to the right and one node to the bottom now both of these will become their own starting points both of them will become their own light bulbs and in this way we can continue this procedure on and on and on and we'll be able to search this <coughs> sorry uh, this by the way is still the solution for uh, this problem where there are obstacles and we have to detect whether we have uh, we can reach the end or not let's actually code this up so we'll have this queue equals to queue and we'll import this queue from queue import queue and now that we have the queue we'll put the element uh, 0 0 in it and we'll say while not empty we want to do some computation first get me the current light bulb i'm looking at so we'll get the queue light bulb and then we'll want to iterate for for neighbor of x comma y uh this is a very neat implementation part here i'll explain that in a second uh and then what did we want to do mm. if x comma y is not an obstacle put that neighbor inside of the queue so if the grid of x y is one if it's an obstacle then we'll skip over that but if it's not an obstacle we can add this neighbor to the queue so we'll do queue dot put this guy let's actually get the neighbors okay so how can we find the neighbors uh this is sort of an implementation trick i learned from somewhere else sorry what we're going to do is we'll do this we'll basically want to consider all of the cases of up down left right and this is what i'm trying to do over here we'll do plus minus x and plus minus y you'll understand what i mean very soon so we'll iterate over all of these and, and we'll call this dx dy this sort of specifies a change in x and a change in y so the first case is a change of one in x and zero in y and so on and so forth so this way you can sort of spread out your search Feel free to write it down by the way. These are just four vectors pointing up, down, left, right. That's all I'm doing. And uh, the new x is going to be dx plus x. And uh, the new y is going to be dy plus y. We'll also want to check by the way whether uh, we are not overstepping our boundaries. Right? So we'll actually do it over here. Uh, we'll replace this neighbor with uh, nx and y and if nx is in bounds and ny is in bounds then only we're going to do this in bounds meaning uh, we have 0 less than equals to this guy which is less than equals to uh, m minus 1 and this should be n minus 1 we'll also specify n and m all right so we are done with this solution and uh, how do we detect whether we have reached the end or not so we'll not do it over here we'll say hey if you are if you are going to start a light bulb at this x comma y position just check beforehand if this x comma y if this particular x comma y is the same as m minus 1 comma n minus 1 and this is the case where we have 
reached this green part and we're saying that okay go ahead and start a light bulb at this point but we don't actually care about the light bulb at this point we'll just return one that hey we were able to reach this point if not uh we'll go ahead and return zero so this by the way don't try to submit this this is not the code we want this is only for the case where we have obstacles and we want to detect whether we can reach the end or not but now let's make things more interesting let's look at this case over here where the question is now we still have obstacles but instead of detecting whether we can reach the end or not i'm going to ask you for the minimum path length okay now this minimum path length sort of demands that we need to keep track of a count somewhere somehow we need to keep track of how far away we are from the original light point and so we'll do just that let's take this example over here where we are starting from this yellow point and now all of these guys one 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 and one are these four directions that we explored in the first iteration in the second iteration you can see that these ones spawn of these twos over here so it's sort of radially expanding outwards and now we're just sort of more looking at them in form of numbers instead of circles that were uh, radially expanding out here this sort of helps us uh, formalize what you're trying to look at so we can just do this on and on and on and we can reach the end over here and whatever this number is we can just return that at the end but this is the case where there are no obstacles what if there are obstacles this will still work because the only thing that these obstacles are going to do is not let us spawn off these light bulbs or these new starting points from it and what we can have instead is we'll just skip over those right so what we did over here is that if not grid of xy if there were no obstacles then we did this computation and that remains as is we're not changing any single line of code yet and the only thing we need to change is this count thing we need to somehow augment we need to somehow add this information of count in bfs see bfs was only taking account of this x comma y coordinates all of the time but we will now force it to keep a track of the count as well so we'll add this count from zero over here and uh, what else do we need to change there's very little that we need to change over here and this count will become count plus one uh this looks like this is it and here we'll return the count and if we cannot get a count we'll return minus one so let's finally come to the solution we have to again we have to do very minimal changes in the code and we can get the solution so just like how we augmented this information of count inside of bfs which was giving us x y we just need to augment this information of dynamites in this guy over here so we had x y before then we added path length to x comma y as you can see by this triple over here and this triple over here but now all we're going to do has is have this k along with it i'm not kidding this is it if we augment this k to the solution we're done with the solution so let's quickly do that and then we'll chill out cool uh what else do we want to change we want to change the count k okay so this is the case where uh, this grid was uh, was not an obstacle in case the grid is an obstacle then we want to do something else so we'll say else uh we'll say l if if you have this particular k if you have valid amount of dynamites then we can do something else what we'll do is we'll still explore but we'll blast the current cell and we'll reduce the number of dynamites by one so this was the case where there were no obstacles and this is the case where there's an obstacle and we can blow it up and uh, i think we're pretty much done let's check this finally we'll be able to check it okay in valid test case we'll move this to one cool answer is six expected is six but uh i think this will still work this is logically correct but let me just show you uh what error this gives me 
it's a very sad error but this is one last observation we need to do great okay time limit exceeded see while this is the correct solution there is a very interesting and a very small detail that is happening i did not focus on this part more i just said that you know what if you reach the end just return the count but why were we able to do this can't there be more possible paths this by the way is now talking about the final original problem we had obstacle plus path plus dynamite thing we were talking about the last we were talking about the original problem in our hand in this case how did i say that as soon as we are at this point we can return the count should we not consider more possible paths and the answer is we don't have to see as soon as you reach this x comma y point where this condition is being followed as soon as you reach this point you will say that i am going to return count and that's because of this assumption over here that the first time you reach this point is going to be the best possible count you can have a more longer convoluted path that gets to the same m minus 1 comma n minus 1 point but that longer path will obviously have a count more than that a shorter path can already give you the answer like the first time you look at the cell is the only time when you need to consider its count in fact there is one more thing that we can base it off we'll have a visited list visited set and we're going to add these elements to the set we'll say hey if this current x comma y comma k is in the visited set then uh, just continue okay i don't want to consider this again because i've already looked at it there is no possible way that i can reduce this count even further i've already looked at it if not i'm going to add this this uh, x comma y comma k element to this visited list and i think we should be done with this uh we'll also just copy paste this and see still gives us time limit exceeded or not uh, cool it looks like we have the correct answer let's submit this guy accept it uh so anyways this is pretty much it for the solution of shortest path in a grid with obstacles elimination i know this problem is a hard problem because it involves a lot of layers of complexity we started off with this original problem where there were a lot of pieces of information given to us but we broke it down we looked at the very very small cases very trivial cases in fact we started off with no obstacles and the goal was to not even count the path length but to detect whether you can reach the end or not and then we added obstacles we figured out that maybe we need to use bfs we wrote down a code for it then we augmented the count to it since the goal was to now count the path length and finally once we were given the dynamite we just augmented that to the original x comma y thing as well <laughs> very fun problem and this is why i love this problem so anyways yeah this is it for the solution of the problem and uh, as always thanks for watching